I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that Jon Favreau may be trying to tell his story of his recent career through this movie. I mean, think about it. Restaurant Chef gets tangled up in the world of social media. Could be representative of Jon Favreau getting tangled up in the world of large-scale blockbusters. And in the film, they mentioned how the first review the food critic gave him was a really strong review. That could be representative of his work on the first Iron Man movie. And then him getting fired over creative differences at the restaurant could be representative of him getting fired over creative differences and thus being booted off Iron Man 2. And then, basically, the idea of him starting over in a food truck, the idea of the character starting over in a food truck, could be representative of Jon Favreau trying to get back to his roots as both an actor and a filmmaker. Again, this is all just speculation on my part, and we're kind of getting into the area of authorial intent, because this could very well be an example of life informing art. And even if Jon Favreau doesn't want them to be there, the parallels are still there. I didn't really have that many expectations going into this film other than the good word of mouth it was getting. All I knew about it is that it was a film written and directed by Jon Favreau that had to do with cooking. And that was about it. However, I didn't expect how integral social media would be into the plot. I mean, I hadn't really seen any of the trailers, if there were any trailers. I just saw the poster, so I was actually kind of surprised how important the social media aspect was to the overall story. As for how social media, and specifically Twitter, was depicted, I actually kind of liked it. It didn't call attention to itself unnecessarily, and actually worked to help the story's underlying theme of virality, of kind of how good word of mouth can pretty much make or break something like the food truck or the restaurant. And that's really, I just liked it, especially with the whole having it appear behind them as they're typing, but not even being like, oh, we're just a giant big tweet floating here, but actually kind of having it faded so that way it's not really trying to stand out and say, look at me! And I actually do kind of like how when he sends it off, it just turns a little bird and flies off. It, it worked really well. I really, really liked how they depicted it in this film. Another thing I must mention is how the food, and specifically the making of the food, is shown in the film. Frankly, it kind of reminded me of the way someone would shoot a porno. Again, it's not done in a way to make the audience uncomfortable, but the way it's shot in the first act of the film is kind of communicating a borderline unhealthy obsession with cooking. And it's a stark contrast with the end of the film, because by the end of the film, the food isn't given as much attention. And so I'm guessing it's kind of a way of the cinematography informing us of information about the main character and kind of reflecting the overall journey the main character takes over the course of the film. I mean, first he thinks kind of cooking is the be all end all, is kind of the only thing he really focuses on throughout his life. I mean, doesn't spend a lot of time with his kid, his wife divorced him, and then by the end of the film, he's kind of acknowledging that, yeah, he's cooking for himself, but the time he's got to spend with his son is definitely a lot more valuable. And so it's definitely a nice, strong case of cinematography helping the story and kind of delivering information that, without having it exposited at us, if that makes sense. That said, the story itself, as you can plainly see, is not all that groundbreaking, not all that original. But like I said earlier, this is Jon Favreau probably trying to get back to his roots as an actor and as a filmmaker, kind of going back to basics. The film itself isn't entirely a comedy, nor is it entirely a drama. It's just a series of events that kind of waver between the two. On that note, the first act of the film actually feels pretty long as they're trying to get to the major inciting incident, which is Jon Favreau's character being fired. I don't even really remember the character's name. I think it's like Carl Casper or something. But basically, that's kind of more the inciting incident, but it does make the first act kind of slow. Once the film kind of moves over to Miami, when like when the main character goes to Miami, that's where things really start to pick up and really get going. Overall, it's an entertaining film, but it is very much an indie film, which may put off some people. I mean, the best comparison I can give is that it's kind of like a more adult-skewed Little Miss Sunshine, which was also an indie film that had some mainstream appeal. However, the film doesn't really have stuff that's all that memorable. There's nothing in this film that really stands out, no memorable lines, no memorable shots. It's just kind of a entertaining story. So at the very least, I didn't get bored while watching. So if you're looking for something that's different, then I recommend checking this film out because it's not too indie, not too mainstream, kind of a nice, for lack of a better term, mid-range sort of picture. That said, I give Chef a five out of five. 
So that's it for this episode of Ronnie's Reviews. As for next week, I'll be taking a look at Tammy. Yeah, not really looking forward to it. Doesn't look particularly good, but then again, beggars can't be choosers. So yeah, I'll see you all next time.